Okay, so the purpose of this video is to show the difference between pressure sensitivity and offset between the screen and the stylus of the iPod Pro, which we have here, Apple Pencil. I put a little grip off a of barrel pen onto this just to give it a little bit more grip. Um, the iPod Mini Retina and the Wacom Cintiq uh, Companion Hybrid. So I'll demonstrate an art rage on all three platforms. But this is just the, the actual weight of the pen with me not putting any pressure on it at all. I'll zoom in. So, like literally, if I, maybe I was putting a tiny bit of pressure there, there we go. That's literally just the weight of the pen. So you get an incredibly fine line. That's it at 62%. So, if I undo those, I'll show you going from pretty much nothing a little bit of pressure, a bit more pressure, a bit more pressure, a bit more pressure. That's the heaviest pressure. So you can see there that you can literally go from the finest line to a nice thick line. So it means you can get very expressive lines, which is excellent. So next up is Procreate, which is an excellent, powerful art up for the iPad. Um, I'll zoom in here again just to show you how fine the marks can be. You'll probably not even really be able to see them. And it starts off very, very light, gets darker, and I lean heavier. I mean, that's, as good as it gets really for pencils and you've got the shading which should be set up automatically on again it's all pressure sensitive Almost nothing. So again, very natural feeling. Okay, next up, I'm gonna have a look at the iPad Mini uh, with the bamboo bamboo fine line from Wacom which is a Bluetooth stylus. Um, I actually thought this one was just wasn't too bad until I used the the iPad Pro with the pencil and then I started thinking to myself that it was kind of unusable. I'll take the pressure up the size, sorry, to 67. Zoom in a bit as well, just so you can see. Now that's the pen just sitting on the screen. This is me putting a bit of pressure and then a lot of pressure. So you can see there, compared to the iPad Pro, um, on Pencil, the performance, is, it lags quite a lot behind. Um, the 
starting line is thick. And there, there is definitely pressure, you know, there's a pressure curve there, but it's not anything amazing. It's definitely usable, but I mean, I don't know what happened there. Alright, hold on. Seems when the color wheel is up. That's weird. I took the color wheel down. You hit the color wheel in the corner. To bring it up and put it away. There's a big lag with the color wheel showing. Without the color wheel, there's no lag. Okay. That must be a bug with their UI. Strange. Okay, so if you're using iOS R Ridge with a Wacom stylus and you're finding you're getting a lag, it's probably because of the color wheel. That's really strange. Hopefully by the time that I've uploaded this video, Apple will have announced a 9.7 inch pencil enabled iPod Pro or iPod Air 3 or whatever they plan to call it. Um, that would be excellent. I think if they do that, they're going to really, really corner that market for artists' tablets and people will be very, very happy with the performance of the pencil. I mean, to be honest, I've been blown away with the pencil. I was using this for a month or more until I got the iPad Pro and this just seems completely insufficient now for, in terms of accuracy, in terms of pressure sensitivity. Um, it just doesn't compare. So yeah, if the iPad Pro comes out in a 9.7 inch version and you have the money and you're on the market for a graphics enabled tablet, I would say go for the 9.7 inch version. If you have the money to spare, um, possibly go for the 32 gigabyte version of the iPad Pro. And if you've got money to burn, the 128 gigabyte version of the iPad Pro is probably pretty attractive. So yeah, maybe go for that. So this is the Wacom Cintiq Companion Hybrid and this is the Pro Pen that comes with it. It is 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity, it has programmable buttons on it, interchangeable nibs and an eraser on the end. Um, to be honest, on the Apple Pencil I don't really miss the buttons or the eraser, um, uh, just they're not something that I would use too much and I uh, find myself holding the pen in a specific way and then the nib can tend to get worn down um, in an irregular way because you're tending to use it on one particular side whereas with the Apple Pencil you don't need to think about that, you can just use it whatever way and because there's no real tooth on the screen of the Apple iPad Pro, um, you don't experience the same wear, or I don't think you will experience the same wear. So, a little bit of painting, get it up to 100%, do the same test. Black pen. Um, 
close down. I'll do the same test on this just to see. I'll put it up to 67%. And this is the pen just resting on the screen again. It's hard to do because the screen's at an angle. So I'll zoom in again because I did that over the other two. A bit of smoothing going on there on that one. Smooth thinking, and then I'll take the smoothing off. I'll take it very way down. It's down to nine percent, so that's why that's so thin. So you definitely have a lot more pressure sensitivity than the fine line. Comparable sensitivity to the pencil I actually think that the Apple pencil wins because the, the pressure curve is less sensitive at the start you get a more gradual pressure curve This is to try and give you an idea of the offset between the screen and where you're actually making the mark on the Cintiq. So you can see there is an offset there, which it's not too bad. You don't get, you know, it doesn't boot you off. You can make your lines meet okay. I'm doing this through the viewfinder, so but you do get used to it. But it's definitely there, it's maybe two to three millimeters under the actual screen. And that'll be on any Cintiq that you're using, so it's just part of the way the technology works but it's perfectly usable and normal for Cintiqs okay next up this is the iPad mini retina and this is just to show you any kind of offset on this To me, for some reason, the offset can vary quite wildly. And it can take a little while for it to catch up. In terms of accuracy, I don't think it's... anywhere near as accurate as the the pro pen from the Cintiq companion hybrid it can be difficult to get lines to join each other you know they don't go exactly where you expect them to go and your starting pressure has to be heavier it's not 
terrible, it is usable, but it, it's quite disappointing. Um, is there a user in this? Yeah, there is a in this one. Actually seems to lag worse than it does on the Cintiq Companion Hybrid in Android. Um, if I reorientate the screen so that it's in lens or portrait mode and try this again. You can see how far off it is. There's an offset to the left of the nib of about two millimeters. Which means the you know, guy tried to draw that right on the end there and it was two millimeters off. I'll try it again. Mm. It can be done, you just you, f you find yourself sort of second guessing where the lines are going to appear. Um, in terms of offset this way, there you can see more clearly. When you orientate the pen that way, it's not as it's not as evident. When you have the pen upright, you can see. Strange. Uh, probably just a limitation of the technology in the older iPads and the Wacom Bamboo Fine Line. It's not a terrible pen. I've, I've painted some pieces with it, and it's it's okay. Um, but now that I've used the Apple iPad Pro and the Pencil, uh, it just, there's too many limitations for me to even consider it for anything remotely professional. Last but not least, to show you any kind of offset between the Apple Pencil and the screen of the iPad Pro. No. I'm on a racer, so that's not going to work. If I put the pencil fully up on its end, you can see that there is maybe half a millimeter of half a millimeter of offset between the screen of the iPad I'll actually I'll tilt it even more I'll tilt, tilt the screen up What this means is that you can have much more accuracy when I'm having no problems basically getting those lines all on each other. So for any kind of intricate line work, you can get it as accurate as you are, not as accurate as the technology is, um, which is a huge plus as an artist. I mean, I've never been a particularly huge fan of Apple, but credit where credit is due. They have really knocked the ball out of the park with 
the iPod Pro and the pencil. Um, I'll try and get even closer here. Just to show you, I mean, the comparison between this and even the Cintiq. It's a fraction of what the Cintiq offset is. And compared to the Bamboo Fine Line, um, there is no comparison, really. And you can draw. Oh, you can draw at the edge of the screen, but because the menu for Art Rage is at the edge of the screen, it keeps bringing up the menu. So there will be even more of an offset with the uh, uh, Wacom Cintiq Companion Hybrid. The closer to the edge of the screen that you get, like maybe the, the last 5 millimeters or so. Whereas with the iPad Pro, there's zero. There is a definitely a, an even bigger offset at the edge of the screen with the iPad Mini Retina as well. I mean, it's huge. You sort of want to be only using the stylus in the center of the screen and you'll be pinching and zooming for accuracy and prepare to undo a lot of times with the uh, iPad mini or I, what, normal iPad. I'd say hopefully Apple announce on the 21st of March that they're releasing a 9.7 inch iPad Pro with 4 gigabytes of RAM and you know all the rest of it and not pencil support which if they do that then I would say Wacom's in big trouble and Microsoft would need to up their game Wacom would need to up their game considerably or they risk going out of business possibly you know it's really I don't know. Personally, I'm very, very, very impressed by the iPad Pro and the pencil. Um, it's hard for me to fault it in any way. The only way that I could fault it is that it's not running a full operating system. But to be honest, with Alexa Procreate and um, ArtRage concepts, I would like to see Corel Painter on it. I don't know why Corel Painter doesn't exist on the iPad. It seems a little strange that you can get it for Android, but not the iPad. But it is what it is, I guess. It's a great app. I would love to see it on iPad. Um, and then you've got Sketchbook Pro. Sketchbook Pro is okay. It has okay symmetry and things like that in it, but it wouldn't be my favorite app. I don't know. There's just something about it that doesn't appeal to me anywhere near as much as Procreate. Procreate's amazing in that it supports custom brushes and has a community of people that make custom brushes and you can even buy custom brushes and things like that so yeah I mean Great palm rejection as well on the iPad Pro. I mean, that's one thing that the Cintiq has as well. The iPad Mini does not have any real um, touch rejection or palm rejection, which means that what you're going to end up with is uh, a lot of either marks on your screen or you need to sort of adjust your drawing style so that your palm is never touching the screen which affects accuracy even more so what you've got is a stylus that doesn't have the accuracy of other styluses plus the fact that you can't rest your palm on the screen to gain accuracy which makes it even less accurate so yeah 